Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to World Copper's channel focused on the exploration and development of world-class copper assets in Chile. Joining us, the Chief Executive Officer, Nolan Peterson. Welcome, sir. Hello. Nice to be here. Such a pleasure to have you. So we're going to later, at a later date, kind of dive and divulge a lot more into the uh, assets that you own. But I think today, for newer investors, it'd be really fun to get some of your experience. Where are you from? What kind of led you to World Copper and any insights you can offer just kind of surrounding your background? Sure, thanks. Yeah, I have a, a, a quite an interesting story, I think, uh, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> uh, I grew up in a little town called Cambridge Bay, Nunavut in northern Canada. Probably most people are unfamiliar with that, but Google it. It's pretty far north. I spent 17 years of my life uh, growing up up there. I'm not Inuit or First Nations or anything like that. That's the first question people ask me, um, but I did grow up there, so I'm very sensitive to uh, mining development as it's very large, uh, a very big industry in the local communities up there. I saw it firsthand. Uh, I had family who worked uh, in, you know, dealing with mining operations. So that's, I got very comfortable with mining uh, from that background. I then went to the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, where I graduated with an engineering degree in metallurgy. And that's what led me into the mining industry directly working for mining companies and with mining companies. I started with a company called SNC Lavalin, which did engineering and procurement and construction management, worked with some major players like Newmont, Barrick and Rio Tinto, uh, project development, project valuations, technical reports, uh, client relations, on-site construction work, all the good stuff that a junior engineer needs to learn before they can do a good job. I then went to work for a company called New Gold, uh, which was a copper gold company in, based in Canada. And I worked on some const large scale construction projects with CapExes in the billions of dollars. And then uh, I got a finance background and I've so I've spent the last five years working in corporate finance for mining companies. So that's, uh, that's basically how uh, my career led me to World Copper. World Copper is a company that's focused on exploration and development. And I bring a strong uh, development background and experience working with major companies uh, and seeing how they operate. And that's the kind of company we want to build at World Copper. And I was a natural fit for that. Yeah, so it's basically in your blood. I mean, it's pretty great yes. to hear your uh, your background in this. Do you mind touching base on some of the other team members as well and kind of the experience they bring? I know you got Marcelo in there as the uh, executive director in Chile, but anybody else as well and any insights surrounding that experience? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so Marcelo Awad is our executive director in Chile. He has an extensive history in mining as well. He was the CEO of Antofagasta Minerals, which is one of the world's largest copper producers. And being, uh, he, he was a CEO, took it from $4 billion to $20 billion valuation over his tenure there. He brings a lot of experience to the team in understanding the Chilean marketplace uh, and mining development, how to get projects, uh, get projects through the permitting uh, cycle, advancing them and marketing them to local uh, communities and, and, and cutting through the political situation down there. We also have Hank Van Elfen, who's the chairman of World Copper, uh, and he's also uh, was, he's a kind of a mentor of mine and he's friends with Marcel Wad. They are involved in a company called Wealth Minerals together. And that's how World Copper uh, came about, uh, you know, trying to capitalize on uh, their understanding of the Chilean marketplace. Uh, so Wealth Minerals has been dealing in lithium in uh, Chile for a, a large period of time. And so together they said, you know, let's leverage our experience and capitalize on that and start focusing on copper as well. Uh, Hank Van Alphen has an extensive history in building up and uh, creating value sh for shareholders with, with junior mining companies. His first success was Corriente Resources, which uh, he grew from about $20 million and sold for 860 million to uh, a Chinese group. So yeah, there's a lot of history there with, uh, with gentlemen like Hank and Marcelo and myself. Uh, we also have a person named Patrick Burns, who's our president, he's a geologist who has had a 40 year history in South America uh, with some major discoveries, including Escondida, which is the world's largest copper mine. 
Uh, he, he was involved in the discovery of that early in his career. So we have the experience to find, discover, and develop as assets and grow them in the marketplace. Yeah, so you really kind of touched base on, uh, you encapsulated a lot there. I mean, you kind of touched mm-hmm. on the, the vision, uh, how your team kind of brought you to Chile. Uh, just to finish up, because we're going to come back to the company itself and really divulge, do you want to just give some insights on what your interest is with the copper as the commodity itself and kind of what's driving you into that sector? Yeah, so that's also a very interesting question for me. I spent the majority of my career in gold mining, uh, the gold mining industry. I worked for New Gold, which was copper and gold, but primarily uh, derived its revenues from gold. I worked after that for uh, TMAC Resources, which is also a gold project in Nunavut, actually. So for the better part of a decade or so, plus all the time I worked with SNC, I was focusing on gold. But I personally find copper a very, very interesting commodity uh, for the way it's positioning itself for the future, its involvement in electrification, uh, greenification, electric vehicles, uh, you know, uh, hydropower, solar power, wind power turbines, they'll all be using copper as we start to re- try to reduce greenhouse gases. I think there's a strong demand for copper building and simultaneously a decrease in supply as copper becomes harder and harder to find. So that's what we're looking for. We're trying to find uh, assets that are undervalued and underappreciated and apply our expertise in, in you know, just finding what, finding the copper there and positioning them well for the future. Yeah, I, I think people should appreciate that. I, I really feel like uh, copper is kind of becoming the new gold. I don't think people really understand. Um, I don't know the exact statistic off the top of my head, but electric vehicles are using like over double the copper capacity. And I mean, you're looking at the uh, the commodity price itself holding up some pretty good highs here. But on that note, uh, Nolan, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. And yes, it's it's four times the amount of copper in electric vehicle than an internal combustion engine vehicle. I'd love to come back and talk to you more about some of those stats in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And in light of this, folks, if you ever have any questions, let us know what you think in the comment section below, and we can bring it up to Nolan at a later date as well. But in light of this, stay cool, stay awesome, and we'll catch you in the next one.